Good afternoon and welcome to the what are we, April meeting of the Public Works Committee. Um, in attendance are our four committee members, Annette Scipio, John Larson, and via computer, Barbara Burke. And we, as usual, have items on our consent agenda as well as our general agenda. I've already been asked to pull C1 and C6. Are there any other items that council members would like to pull to discuss? If not, if I could get a motion for approval of the balance. I move for approval of the balance. Second. We have a motion and a second. And Councilmember Burke, can you, are you attached? Can we hear you? She does not you know, seem to be able to hear us. She must be on. Yeah, it looks like she can't hear us. Sorry? Your mic. Yeah. Councilmember Burke. You want me to send her text? Yeah. Looks like she's looking. She didn't have her audio on. <coughs> Did she keep calling her? Text. She just got it. Councilmember Burke, can you hear us? Not yet. Yeah. Looks like she's reading Angela's text. Yeah, I think she said no. 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 The vote? You no. said she can't hear us. She can't okay. Hear us. Um, can Looks like she has no audio. She can. She you know, she can't hear us. Can she? Sp she, she can't speak. Okay. What's our procedure in that? Call this her case. on the phone. Can she call in? She can call in. We just need her to identify herself and uh, state her vote. We have a quorum without her, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think we do. Who are the committee members? Well, Scipio, the myself, Larson. Oh, yeah. Yep, you're good. Okay, can we move on until we get that technical hurdle? We can and just go back and. They did. They did. With yes. three. Yeah, that's the vote. Okay. okay, I recorded it. I can hear it. Yes. Okay. Uh, if the clerk could read C1, please. She's busy. Okay. Item C1, resolution authorizing the town and country neighborhood traffic calming plan for funding and construction. Mr. Fanzler. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. We can get a report on this. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Question. Oh. Um, we do have a specific okay. question on it. Yes. Uh, Mr. Fans, I had not seen um, a traffic calming plan before that had a multi way stop and a center line in it. And I wondered if you could explain that. I'm happy to. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, Councilmember Scipio, to answer your question specifically, I'll back up just a minute. I'm not sure about that. But um, those options, uh, the multi way stop and the center line treatment markings, those are specifically spelled out in our traffic calming policies as options that a petitioner can request. So I mentioned often that there's several options, and those are one of many. Unfortunately, this, this by has a tendency to, to see a lot of the speed cushions that do come through. But we work with the neighborhood on options that uh, were, were different than that, and they selected these multi-way stops and then the center line markings improvements. So that's why you're seeing those, because they are viable options, and they did go through the process just like any of our other recommendations. What are they? I'm sorry? What's a multi-way stop? Multi-way stop. It's four, four? That's correct. I'm four sorry. Four-way stop? Yes, council member, oh. that's just DOT lingo for everybody in all directions has to stop at the intersection. Thank you. And what about the center, the center line? The what? center line is just that double yellow 
in design, the double yellow center line that designates the lane assignment. So it's oh. just a traditional yellow line that you see on the roads, establishing where you're supposed to be, narrowing it down from a wider facility to a designated lane. Okay, thank you. That's, you're welcome. The thought, that's being, the thought being that the, the narrower the lane, the less tendency there is to speed. On that, on that that's track. correct, Na visually narrowing it to restrict. Okay. I did want to make a comment also on the map that you included. I thought it was a large neighborhood. Maybe that's why you showing that how many people said yes and how many people said no. I thought that was really good to be able to see that. Mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes we don't get to see the vote uh, like this. So I, I, I really appreciate it seeing that in this neighborhood. We'll be sure to include that moving forward. It was a lot of votes. The neighborhood yeah. worked really hard on this, so I commend them on that. Thank you, Councilman. You're right, obviously, you know, this is the neighborhood that, that was very challenging. You see the different mixture of votes there. It took us some time to get there. This is a battle, but ultimately, it took a lot of the champions of the neighborhood wanting this to see it through the finish line, and that's what it takes. So exactly. mm -hmm. here's the results. Thanks for y'all's efforts on this. Thank okay, you. can I get a motion? Yeah. Uh, with that, I move for approval. A second. We have a motion and a second, and Councilmember Burke, I believe that we have you in attendance now completely. So if we can have yes. a, uh, great, <laughs> all right. And we do have on our screens a way to vote. Councilmember Burke, we're gonna count you as a yes with that thumbs up. Perfect. Thank you. Now we just lost. Yep, her. Yes, lost. <laughs> wow. she's, she's still up there. Yeah, yeah. She, oh, she's overlooking us now. Are we okay. I don't see the results. Of the oh. it was, it was okay, that was unanimous. Yeah. And if we could just go back and uh, ask Councilmember Burke for her vote on the first uh, motion, which was to approve the balance of the consent agenda. You'll just give us a thumbs up or say aye. Great, <laughs> perfect, <laughs> unanimous. I love it. Okay, the next consent agenda item pulled is C6. Item C6, resolution authorizing the acquisition of fee simple right-of-way and easements for construction of the Salem Parkway multi-use path located in the Northwest Ward. Again, Mr. Fansler, if you'll enlighten us. Absolutely happy to, Mr. Chairman. Good, good afternoon again, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. This item is essentially, as noted, a fee simple right-of-way acquisition for the multi-use path, particularly this segment is uh, in proximity to the ballpark where the multi-use path segment crosses between Green Street there adjacent to the ballpark. And so just the zoning and the comparables, um, the amount of property we have to take, a little bit more expensive just because of the, uh, the type of zoning and type of uh, use that it is. So we did run this through our real estate team. We questioned it. We had it properly vetted through NCDOT right away acquisition processes as well as following that, that protocol since it, since it is federally funded. And again, this is just to acquire the necessary property to construct the path. Question. Um, the only question that I had was, I, I know we get easements, but this one spoke to temporary easements mm -hmm. for construction. So does that mean that after the path is constructed, um, they get removed, the, temp the easements? That's the, that, Council Member Scipio, great question. And the temporary easement is essentially just that, right? It's essentially we need the space to build it. Oftentimes there's some fine grading that goes outside of what you need for the actual sidewalk or this this case the path to reside permanently. And that space for that grading effort and the, the constructability of the path requires what we call a temporary easement because at the end of the day, it'll be regraded, resowed, and it'll revert back to the condition that it is. But we just need that space to get the grade finalized and, and the space to build the, the path. Mm -hmm. I did have a question where the path was going to be. On the map that was enclosed, it didn't sort of show exactly where, but there were some little yellow dots or squares, and I didn't know what they meant. It's not, on, it's not showing on this particular. The map just has a star with the, with the two locations where There's the users occur. Yeah. The, the one east of Broad Street actually is where the MEP will go down to meet Brookstown. That's right. Under the bridge and then up High Street, correct? That's, that's, you're exactly right. And maybe it'll be good if, if DOT can produce a, an alignment map that shows exactly where this project will be. The purpose of this item is just to show and then indicate the property needed, but this project does is comprehensive and, and we have good alignment maps that show you 
what that's supposed to look like and where it's going. We yeah, can provide that. That would be good. We can get a copy Absolutely. of that. Absolutely, happy to. Perfect. Um, with right. that, I move for approval of C6. Can I get a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Let's all vote. And I lost Councilmember Burke, so as soon as we get her back on the screen. There we go. Councilmember yeah. Burke, if we can see a thumbs yeah. up. He said yes. Perfect. Thank you very much. That is unanimous. All right. Consent items dealt with. Let's go to the general agenda. And these are both public hearings. So uh, if we could get an intro from Mr. King, I'd appreciate it. Oh. Item G1, public hearing on request to name a new road off Chatelon Drive to Caleb Lane, in, located in the North Ward. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Mayor Pro Tem Adams, Council Members. Jamie, if you don't mind pulling up that map, that might be helpful for this discussion. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Um, so this is a street naming request and the request is basically for a piece of property that's undeveloped off Chatelon Drive. So this is, um, if you're heading out um, Renolda Road where it intersects with Chatelon, turn right on Chatelon and this is not too far back to the east from that intersection. You can see the address with a label on the map where this is pointing to and essentially what we have here um, is, is we don't have enough address range to accommodate a duplex that's proposed to been built on this parcel. So obviously we follow chronological ordering and our numbering, odds and evens, it's pretty standard. And basically you see when we have those um, two structures built on either side of this vacant parcel, we don't have two numbers available between those two that fit. And so this, um, what you would have would be basically a private street, Caleb Lane that would be the air, basically be constructed in there and then you would have the two address assignments off of Caleb Lane. Glad to answer any questions. This is in the North Ward. And Mayor Pro Tem, do you have any questions before we go? Okay, great. Um, I will open the public hearing and ask if there's anybody in opposition to this in the audience. Seeing none, I will close. I just close the public hearing now. Where do I ask for, okay, yeah. So I close the public hearing and ask for a motion. Or a comment. Or comments. Can I, can I ask questions? This is this business is basically a private drive to two apartments or two condominiums or what? A duplex, two units, that's correct. What, that's what it is. So it only goes as deep as the uh, as the lot is itself. It doesn't go anywhere else. Other that's correct. On just into those lots. Thank you. Okay. There's nothing else. Can I get a motion? Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Councilmember Burke, if we could, if you could indicate, very good. <laughs> awesome. That is unanimous. Thank you very much. I think we're an all-star vote. Like All right, let's go to G2, please. Siskel and Eber. Item G2, public hearing on request to name a new road off Carol Withers Drive on the campus of Wake Forest University to Forest Bridge Way, located in Northwest Ward. Mr. King, if we could get some background on this. Absolutely, and I'll, I think Jamie's gonna pull up the map for this one also. Thank you. So um, you may remember it was probably a few months ago, maybe before the holidays, we brought an item to this committee to do some street naming uh, and renaming on the campus of Winston-Salem State University. In that same meeting, we also had Wake Forest okay. University. We, we brought both of them <laughs> um, and we kind of compiled them together in a batch. This segment that you see here delineated in red on that map kind of north of those practice fields and in between those two um, facilities there, it was, it was included. Um, but the name that was submitted at that time did not meet our addressing requirements, our, our street name requirements rather. And so Wake Forest had to go back to the drawing board and come up with something that did work within our policy. And so what you've got now is basically naming that Forest Bridge Way, which does comply with our street naming policies. Glad to answer any questions. Very good, Councilmember Scipio. Sometimes you bring us things that just 
ask, uh, make me think about something. And what are our street naming guidelines that the original name didn't meet? Uh, I didn't know we had such guidelines. We do, and for that, I'm gonna ask Matthew Hamby with Matt Forsyth to come up and speak to that in a little bit more detail than I'm probably capable of doing. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, Good afternoon. In regards to your question, <clears throat> it was a duplication of the name, of an existing name that we already had, either in the city or the county, and I can't remember exactly what the name was, but we don't allow any more duplications of names. So that was the problem. Are there other guidelines, uh, like person living, person not living? Yep. So owned slaves, didn't own slaves? I, mean, <laughs> uh, I don't have them all memorized, but simple, some of the ones that come up commonly are the name has to be spelled the way it's spelled in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. It can't be named after someone who's um, currently alive. They have to be deceased for at least five years, and they have to submit a biographical information of that person's uh, contributions to society. Um, no vowel, no um, vowel words, of course, has to be no more than two words. Uh, can't contain any directional in the name. So uh, I can't remember. We have a few more, but I can't remember the rest of them. And council members, please address the chair before you ask questions. So are you done? Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Thank any you. Any other questions? Councilmember Larson? These, these are city streets now, right? It's not private street. Private streets. So this is a private street. It'll be a private street. So we'd have no maintenance. We have no maintenance requirements on this at all. Wake Forest will maintain. And the naming of the street, then we still control that. Correct. Interesting. We, there's still city service, like a 911 uh, fire. All those still respond. Right. So right, we right. try to stay within the, the 911. Right. You know, sure. Request of not having duplicate street names. Sure, it makes good sense. Thank you. So we're trying to make a conscious effort not to be Atlanta and have peach trees <laughs> every, everywhere. Right. right. So yeah. something comes across the 911, we know where it is. Right. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Um, this is this also is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience who is opposed to this? Seeing none, I close the public hearing. I would ask for a motion. So move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Let's all vote. Councilmember Burke votes yes. That is unanimous. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Unless there is any other further business, we are adjourned.